I would say, in general, I'm probably a, a pragmatic idealist. I know that's generally a contradictory couple of terms, but for me, I think it's probably a pretty good description. I would say, uh, if, if I do a personality test, it comes out that I'm a shaper, so I like to shape other people and things around me according to what I feel I can give to them. Um, I am a perfectionist uh, in a lot of ways, so I have really high standards for myself and for others around me, but mainly because I believe that people can achieve a lot when they, uh, when someone believes in them enough to have that type of expectation for them. I come from Texas. I, uh, the great state of Texas, we are very prideful people. So we, uh, we actually don't tend to say we're from the U.S., we tend to say we're from Texas. Um, I was born in Austin, which is the capital, but I moved around a lot. My dad is in oil, so we moved around a lot growing up, but mainly through Texas. So Austin, Houston, Corpus Christi, etc. So um, I uh, went to high school in a very small town where I raised lambs for a living, and that was my very first experience being an entrepreneur. So I actually started raising and selling lambs in livestock shows. And I found that I could sell them for 400% of what I bought them for. 400%? <laughs> yes. Mainly because I was a cute high school kid at the time. And people would buy them for more than what they were worth. So, so yeah, but it, it really got me interested in business. And, it, and I thought, wow, you can really transform something from nothing. And that's really amazing. So I went to university at the University of Texas, it's a really, really big university, and I was in the business program, and, um, and I just fell in love with business uh, from the beginning, and I think the reason I chose business is because when I looked at all the different disciplines, uh, I realized that business is the only one that doesn't seem to have a ceiling. Like, there's no limit to what you can do in business or how much you can achieve. Whereas maybe being a doctor or being a lawyer, there's sort of a, a cap to what you can be and achieve. But with business, it's so open and there's so many fields you can be involved in. And it seemed like the possibilities were unlimited. And I really liked that about business. Yeah, so I, I worked a bit in between those those two experiences. Um, I didn't go direct, um, but Harvard was amazing. I mean, I think I think the the, the thing about Harvard is that it, you know, in terms of being um, kind of a university academically, I think that there wasn't maybe so much of a difference between that and the University of Texas. I think they were pretty rigorous, both of them. But what's great, what's amazing about Harvard is that almost every week, especially in Kennedy School. You have a new world changer who's coming to speak uh, to the school. You know, so you, so you have um, we even we even had uh, um, Odinda come and speak to us, um, and you and you can learn a lot about uh, where they come from and then uh, what challenges they face, and, and 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 I think I think to to have that close of access to such amazing world leaders on almost a weekly basis is something that Harvard. I would say just unrivaled access that you can get. And that was, and then I think the second part about Harvard that was really amazing was the people. So my, my friends and colleagues that were in my class were all people that have done amazing things. So they, are, they were people that, you know, had gone and been, um, you know, reporters in the Congo, you know, in the middle of the Civil War, or they had gone and started um, you know, some sort of transformational NGO, or, or they had gone and, and, and sort of um, been side by side with, with some of the biggest political movers and shakers at that time, so maybe they had been their sort of legislative aide, or they had been um, their, uh, their campaign manager, etc. And these were the people that I was going to school with, and that's quite inspirational. Well, I had, I had a, a professor who is Kenyan. His name is Professor Kalestis Juma. And he is, uh, he was, uh, I, think, I think, pretty fundamental in sort of steering me towards Kenya. I think he, uh, he tries to do that with probably every student he comes across. But, um, but I already had a real interest in Africa. So, so for me, he sort of said, look, what you want to do with business is really interesting. That's something that Kenya really needs. And 
he was pretty fundamental in sort of shifting my thinking towards this region. Um, and I think second is I was able to get access to a lot of contacts and even work a bit with the Ministry of Finance here on my thesis. And so getting to work with them on how do you identify and remove bottlenecks in the private sector was a big part of what actually led me to start SNAFIT. First, I would say my first sort of really substantial job was working for Procter & Gamble. Okay. And uh, I was doing sort of brand and marketing research with their customers. And that was really fascinating because I was working with uh, Olay, the brand, I'm sure you, you know of it. Yeah. Um, and you know, Olay is a really great brand, but it's sort of people think of it for old ladies. So uh, there's this sort of <laughs> interesting, um, interesting opportunity got to think about how do we increase the size of the pie for Olay? How do we get some of these younger customers to start getting interested so that the actual customer that Olay has doesn't die? Right? And that's, a real, <laughs> that's a real possibility. Um, and then the second thing, uh, the second job I was made is quite substantial was working for McKinsey. And McKinsey is a very large international management consulting group. and. McKinsey was um, just, a, just an amazing experience to get to go behind the scenes for some of the largest Fortune 500 companies in the world. And so you really get, you get sort of front row access to the CEO, you get to hear what their challenges are so at the deepest, kind of highest levels of management, and you get to actually advise them on those. In the context of a team, of course, you know, you have a manager, so you're not sort of left there by yourself. But, um, but but that was that was really fascinating and, and it was also extremely challenging. So I had to work very very long hours, constant travel. But I think it was worth it again to get that kind of experience. I think I learned a lot about myself in terms of what my strengths are and how um, and how I can emulate or not emulate a lot of what the CEOs were doing. So just, just learning from their successes and their mistakes was something that I found really interesting. Um, you know, you see some CEOs, I think in particular, like Dr. Gamble, um, who's also a client of McKinsey, they, I think they, they, they have an amazing corporate culture, right? I mean, they have this incredible family feeling within a company that's something like 167,000 employees. And to, and to be able to keep a family feeling within that big of a company is, is something that I think, if I ever started a company that could be that large, that is quite a feat. And started to see how they did that, and how they managed to achieve that was something, you know. And then things like seeing some CEOs that where the corporate culture is really terrible. <laughs> you know, you just see these employees that are there, but they honestly are not motivated by their job and to see what mistakes they made. Um, particularly, I think, some of the problems about emerging companies. So you saw a lot of cultural clashes and how do you manage that. So I think there was, there was, there was so much I learned from that process.